Good morning and thank you for joining us together at New Life Assembly. This is the Sunday before Christmas and we're excited to have you here. I want to thank Aaron and Renee for doing worship this morning and uh, just join in as we sing some Christmas carols and we talk about what is God's love.
Good morning and uh, welcome to the last Sunday before Christmas. I am so glad that you're here to watch this with us. I wish we could get together, but alas, we're not able to, so we're going to do it this way for today. Make sure you join us on uh, on, when, on Thursday night as well for our Christmas Eve service at 7 p.m. here online as well, and we'll be talking and celebrating Christmas Eve together. Um, I'm going to talk about Christmas love today. Today is the fourth week of Advent, and I want to talk about what it means to have the love of Christmas. I'm going to read in Matthew 1, 18 to 23, and it says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, that the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In John 3, 16 to 17, we probably know this very familiar verse. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And verse 17, which is less known, but for God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So Christmas love is a story of God's love to us. I want to tell you a story. Christmas was an exciting time, uh, and Joey, Joey was excited too. He was only 10 years old, and he was as excited as any 10-year-old boy could be. For him, Christmas was still a time of wonder. He did the things that most 10-year-olds would do. He played ball, he rode his bike, and, uh, he climbed trees, he went fishing with his father. He was a happy kid, and he enjoyed his life, every part of life. To him, Life was full of wonder and amazement, and Christmas was the most wonderful time of the year. It was Christmas Eve, and the ground was white with snow. It was cold, and it was clear, and the stars bright that night seemed so close that you could have thought you could reach out and touch them. The family was on their way to their grandparents' house, and that was a family tradition. Joey could hardly wait. He was excited and his mind just raced with the ideas about what he might receive this year for Christmas. What present would be under the tree for him that night? Every year the family would gather and in Grandma and Grandpa's house and there was always a huge tree uh, with a presence under the tree for each person. The kids would seek peeks at the presents and find out where theirs was located. Joey was usually one of the first to find out where his present was placed. But this year, it was different. He didn't find his right away, even though he searched all over. He began to worry because he couldn't find it. Then his eyes caught, caught a big box in the, co in the corner. It was a huge box, the biggest present he had ever seen. He slowly walked over to it, and surely enough, written on the tag were the letters J-O-E-Y. He was grinning from ear to ear, and his eyes were wide with excitement. Grandpa always handed out the presents, and Grandpa was not very fast, but this year he seemed especially slow, and what do you know it, Joey's name was the last one called. As soon as his name was called, Joey bolted to, up to Grandpa. Is this really mine? Is this big present really mine? Grandpa reassured him, and as soon as he knew it was his, he tore into the package, and what do you think he found? What do you think was inside that large box? It was the best Christmas present that Joey had ever received. So what do you think it was? What do you think it was sitting at home? What do you think Joey received? Maybe you can discuss it among yourselves and try to decide what the best present was that Joey had ever received. We all have this picture in our mind of what the best present is. It might change from year to year. It might change from, from time to time. What was the best possible present? What was the best possible present that we could have? And that's the thing. The best possible present is one that we can hold close to our hearts. 
is one that we can hold close to our lives, is one that we can say that, that meant so much to us. How do you measure what the best present is? How do you measure the value of the present? How do you judge its worth? Is it by its size, its weight? Do you judge it by its cost or perhaps its usefulness? If it's usefulness, then those underwear that you got every year as a kid or socks you got every year as a kid were probably the, the best present you ever got. But do you judge it by how much fun it is? Then that toy that you got is the best one. What I'd like to do is this morning is to examine God's present to us. It's wrapped and it has bows on it. And it's standing in the corner and it's large. And, and I want you to follow along with me as I read God's word. In John chapter, or 1 John chapter 1, verses 4, uh, chapter 4, 1 John 4, verses 9 to 11. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we're talking about. Not that we uh, once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage we've done to the relationship with God. My dear, dear friends, if God loved us like this, we certainly ought to love each other. How do you measure God's love to you? I, I want to suggest three ways. The first way we measure God's love is, is by looking at the gift and seeing its usefulness. What's the usefulness of God's gift to us? Notice in verse 9 in, in 1 John chapter 4, the usefulness of the gift is that so we might live. Jesus said it this way in John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. What a promise that is, not just life, but not just existence, but life which means something, life that has worth, life that, that, is, that is filled with purpose, an abundant life, a life which has value, a life which has meaning, a life that will have eternal consequences and benefit. God has made you a special person with a purpose, a special purpose. He chose us. He actually picked us out for, uh, for himself as his own. He picked us out before the foundation of the world. In uh, Ephesians 1, 4, it says that he picked us out. He chose us, actually picked us out for himself in Christ before the foundation of the, the world so that we should be set apart for him. You were especially created, handcrafted, uniquely made for purpose of bringing, the purpose of bringing glory to God. I'm here for the glory of God. You're here for the glory of God. The second way we judge God's gift is measured by its cost. God wants our best. God wants not our burnt offerings, but he wants the best from inside of us. 2 Samuel 24 verse 24 says, I will not offer the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. That's David talking when he was given, uh, people offered to give him the sacrifice so he could make a sacrifice. And he said, no, it's going to cost me something. He, he said, if I'm going to give an offering to God or a sacrifice to God, I'm going to give my best, something of value, something of worth, something that costs me something. Why would David say that? Because it's what God has done for us. What God has done for us has cost him immeasurably. So God's gift is valuable. The third and final point is that God, uh, God's present to you is measured by its effectiveness. If you get a toaster for Christmas, you expect it to make toast. If I get a coffee machine, I expect it to make coffee. If I get, if I get uh, a pair of underwear, I expect the elastic to hold up. But the question that needs to be asked is the, are the gifts that we receive effective? Do they do what they are intended to do? What is the love of God intended to do? It's intended to change you. I want to look at three verses again. To me, to me they seem like a mathematical formula. One plus one equals two. See how it all adds up. God's gift is usefulness plus God's gift is valuable equals we ought to love one another. 
verse 11 in 1 John says, if God loved us like this, then we ought to love one another. Is there somebody that you're maybe harboring something against this Christmas? Can I encourage you to reach out to them? To give them a call, send them an email, send them a text message, say, hey, listen, I did wrong. Or maybe you don't think you did wrong, but you want to say, hey, I want to reconcile. Can we make this right between us? God loves so that we can love one another. Why do we need to love one another? Because we're the light of the world. A city set upon a hill. We need to be an example of Christ to the world. Because Christ first loved us, we ought to love others. This Christmas, as we approach Christmas Eve, as we ponder the coming of the Christ child, I want to encourage you to love with no bounds. Love one another. Love the political leaders that maybe you didn't vote for. Love the political leaders that maybe you didn't desire to have an office. Love the people in your neighborhood that might be encroaching on your, on your lawn. Love the person that seems unlovely and love the person that seems lovely as well. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the ability to be in your presence, the ability to show love one to another. God, would you just work in our lives, in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Again, if you want to give, you can give online to uh, by e-transfer to donations at newlifebr.com. You can also visit our website, www.newlifebr.com, and there's a Donate Now button. This afternoon, at uh, we're doing a drive-through Christmas uh, meal. If, you wanna, if you're in need or, and you need a Christmas meal, please come at 5 o'clock, um, dr drive up the ramp. We'll give you as many meals as you need for your family. Um, if you want to help out with that and you've already volunteered, again, we're meeting around 4.30 in the afternoon, so make sure you see us there. Sorry for the notifications on my phone that happened while I was doing this. I was reading from my phone and uh, an Amber Alert came through, but, uh, you know, God bless you. Have a great day.